Welcome everyone to the main journey, a way for you to join me on a learning journey through life. My name is Samuel Main, and today we welcome David Kyle to the show. David, I appreciate you. Thank you for joining me. No problem at all. Good to be on, even though it's absolutely boiling. Like you <laughs> it is very hot for us in the UK, but we're gonna we're gonna proceed. So first of all. I would like to thank you for joining me, but I know you have this crazy mission to help 100,000 fit pros around the world have an easier, more systemized approach to lead gen. So tell me about your business journey that's led you to this crazy mission that you have. It's, it's two, two parts, really. The 100,000, I was told by my mentor that you need to come up with a ridiculous number. So that's the number I plucked out the air. He said, putting 100 on there isn't really going to get you anywhere or make people stand out. So, OK, let's add a couple more zeros. So that's where the 100,000 came on. But the, the big thing was, like, when I got started as a fit pro, you get this qualification. Then you suddenly think, you know what? You're God's gift. All these people are going to come flying in. You can have people just, you're literally batting them off because you've got so many leads coming, you've got so many people want to join you. I post on Facebook saying I just got qualified and nothing, nothing at all. Um, so I, I did that for like six months up in North Wales. Um, nothing, no, well, you, yeah, you pick up the odd client here and there, you're going to do a 6 a.m. boot camp and no one turns up and it's absolutely pouring down with rain, all this terrible stuff paid a lot of money to a very old guru out there that a lot of people may not like a long time ago. Second module was Facebook ads. And that's what changed the game for me to where I am today. Love it. Yeah, you see it so much in coaches that they just collect qualifications. And it's amazing. Of course, you're up leveling in your ability to coach and serve people. And often to an extent that most people don't even need. But yeah, that marketing and sales is so often just completely missed. And actually, that's where, you know, the personal trainers, the coaches need that that support in, in that area the most. Yeah, it's a massive. We see in load of Facebook groups where people that reach out and say, Dave, I've just got qualified. What's the next course I should be doing or where should I be looking into next? And like before you go and do your level four or your nutrition or your kettlebell or your trx or your warm-up and cool down qualification figure out how to find and sell clients because it doesn't matter you could be the world's best trainer with all these master qualifications and everything but if you don't know how to find someone to pay your wage then you might as well just have all these qualifications and go and work in the supermarket or something. It, it's not going to benefit what it is you actually want to do. Yeah. I've just connected with someone recently and they've got a master's in nutrition. They are so qualified and they, they could do amazing things, but they are yet to have any client experience. Um, and the same thing He's asking, okay, what do I need to do next? It was like, go go and bang on some doors go and get some clients you know so when you started then the facebook ad so at this point you were a personal trainer or a coach yourself and then you were looking to ultimately build your client base talk to me about that journey of like what happened from there it was it was a strange one because like, like you do we've never met we've known each other for a long time. You become friends with of people on Facebook quite quickly. You join Facebook groups, you're adding people as friends, you're just kind of interested in what they're doing. And that's kind of what I'd been doing for that initial six months. And then we moved from North Wales to Southampton, where my partner Holly's from, that's where I met her. We moved down there. So I knew nobody. When I'd been down there last, it was for university, it was three or four years previous. So I know nobody, I knew yeah. nobody down there. But I found a location on the first day. So I found this location. I had to borrow the first month's rent, borrow the deposit as well, £700. I didn't, I just didn't have any money. The course was paid on my credit card, which I didn't tell anyone, tell anyone about at the time. But I ran the Facebook ads. Within two months, I had my first 30 clients. And because I'm shouting about it, oh, my God, I've got my first 10 clients and people are, people are seeing it. People are asking me how I did it. How did you do it? like oh Facebook ads can you show me yeah here's a quick video or here you go I'll just set them up for you and it got to a point where <clears throat> five or six people in of asking I was like oh well you kind of see patterns yeah if somebody if these questions keep getting asked you've got you've got to give a solution for the answer so I was like you know what 
I will just do it for you. And I quoted a ridiculously low amount and I have, I think on about four clients still paying that absolutely ridiculously low price from five years ago. Yeah. Loyalty. Oh, <laughs> That's what that is. Love it. Look, so before we delve into a little bit more of what you're doing now, because I know that that's, that's linked. Um, if you were then a personal trainer, now you've just qualified, what steps would you take to get those initial clients or to get your foot in the door? Yeah, the niche, you have to pick a niche. It's probably so boring. You've probably heard it so many times before. A niche is basically a business plan. I was talking to somebody about this yesterday. You need a business plan. If you don't have a business plan, then you're not going to get anywhere. And no, it's not the boring, create massive Excel spreadsheets and all this. You need to have a plan of action. Who am I going to work with? One, how much money do I need to earn? Two, and what is my business model going to be? Three, you then do a really quick equation. I want to earn £10,000 a month. I want to work with ladies over 30. I want to do large group boot camps. Okay, I can work with uh, 200 people at once, charge more £50 each. That's my 10 grand. That in 30 seconds is a business plan. Now you're going to find ladies over 30 who want to do boot camp who can afford 50 pounds it, it. it really well yeah it, it should be that easy it's you've now got that experience that it's obviously now that's easy right but it's a journey for those those people to go through and we see it a lot um i think one of the biggest patterns that i have fallen victim to myself and i see a lot is just people not charging their worth undercharging so so much so so much it's 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 definitely the biggest mistake we made when we moved to south uh to cardiff so when we moved to southampton because as with this mentor he gave us a price that we should be aiming for and that model of training in southampton was very different to the model of training we started off with in cardiff and that was the biggest mistake i've made because we're, at, we're, we're quite good at keeping clients. So we do have people down here now in Cardiff who still pay that original fee of £50 a month. Yeah, wow. <laughs> and we're not massive boot camp classes. No. Most we do is 15 in a session. So if you do the maths really quickly, that's nowhere near what a fitness business needs to be earning. So a fitness business needs to be earning around 15K, no matter what books you read. Any fitness business that wants two full-time staff and an admin person with you almost being out of the business, you need about 15K. That covers your bills, your mortgage, uh, your rent, staff cost, VAT tax and everything. That might have a thousand pounds profit every single month after everybody's been paid and yourself. But yeah, if you're not hitting that 15K and numbers are not making sense, then you need to, you need to charge, you need to either charge a lot more or change the business model completely. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So I see this now leads into what you're what you're doing now. Can you um, share in the simplest form possible about you know the business and what you're doing at the moment? Because um, that will lead into the next section. Yeah. So we offer two main services now. Really, we offer paid Facebook advertising. Although I try, I'm trying my hardest and my team's hardest to not say the word Facebook because yeah. we want to start delving into other platforms because the big thing we will always struggle with in this day and age is things that you don't have total control of uh, is an issue. Same, we specialize in just Facebook ads. And if Mr. Mac tomorrow decides to pull the plug on, on uh, Facebook, again, we have no our business dies overnight um so don't be reliant on a specific technology saying that we have our own technology so yeah we do paid facebook ads or paid marketing and then we offer a system that helps you generate those leads manage the leads convert the leads automate the leads into a sale so we've kind of we'll generate the leads try and get the leads to that sales that sales point and then it's over to you I'd love to do the sale for most people, but 
that's in that touch. Might, that might come in. Oh, so. there we go. Some secrets being revealed. It sounds exciting. And is your audience primarily then coaches or personal trainers on the gym floor, or is it then business owners? No. So we're again trying to niche down. It's it's so important. So when we started doing this, we were like, yeah, you know what? We will work with any any fit pro going. But you quickly learn uh, some inside secrets about fit pros that they don't often want to reveal about themselves. So we predominantly don't work with many online fit pros um, and we only generally work with studio owners because most of them see what we do. They see I have my own studio, so it's easy to relate easy to write content specifically for, easy to talk to them about because you can just relate to what you do. So it's quite easy. So niching down. But again, yeah, any, anything you're doing in business, be selective about who you're working with. Turn people away, something we often do. If you know they're going to be a bad client, don't, it doesn't matter how much money they're... The, the best example there is like plumbers and stuff. They're just like, oh, I don't like this job. It's a disgusting job. It's the worst job ever. A thousand pounds. The person turns around and says, yes. Oh, okay. I'm getting a thousand pounds for this four hour job. I'll take it. If the person says no, it's like, well, I didn't really want to do the job anyway. So be selective sometimes. Nice. I like that. So what mistakes do you see gym owners or business owners that you work alongside? What is the biggest mistakes that they make in business? We've covered all the main topics really so far, like not having a, you don't have to like say, I only work with dads with two children who are divorced who earn 50K a year. That's being super, super niche. We only work with over 30s. Yeah. We've not niche down dramatically. We just work within a specific type of audience. That would be the best thing. Like the, one of the best examples I can probably give you is Joe Wicks. Yeah. He doesn't shout about who he works with yet. If you go and watch the comments, you're going to see who buys the books, you watch the who buys the DVDs. It's very obvious who he attracts. So you don't always have to shout about your specific type of audience. Just make sure your content does two things. It attracts the right people you want and it repels the people you don't. Yeah, I like that. I think I don't see studios or gyms creating as much content um, as potentially for me. I have a lot of exposure, obviously, to the online side of Fit Pros. Um, so I think that that's an area that I see some business owners can look to improve upon because of how important now, you know, having an online presence can still be and how much it can still be an asset to your business. Would you agree with that? Or is that just because I'm biased because I'm on that online side of the, uh, the business? Okay. You're starting to uh, dig up the things I do not like about fit pros. Yeah. Hit me. <laughs> Online fit pros are unique. You have these ones who are super 100% dedicated and that want to grow a fitness business. And then you have a batch that see these amazing online fit pros living a great life and they want to be that online fit pro. Yeah. What they don't see is the amount of work, the amount of years, the amount of everything, graft, these particular people have had to do so what you'll definitely see it now what we have is a massive lopsided balance you have thousands and thousands and thousands of people who want to go online and think it's all going to happen overnight compared to amazing online trainers you will see, you'll know who they are because they absolutely dam dominate the scene but you do not see the amount of work the amount of years that they've been doing it to get to that point um yeah, so online, that's why you'll see a lot of online people, they've got a lot of spare time. Yeah. They post a load of stuff, they create a load of content. Maybe they're not sure, they're just not sure how to generate the right leads, so they post a load. Whereas being in gym, you have no choice. If you're not posting, you're probably with clients, training them and stuff. And that might be, from your point of view, where you, where you don't see as much content yeah. from 
a studio or offline based fit pro compared to an online fit pro. But then at the same time, a studio on online type of lead is different. For online, it's a lot, lot harder to convert. For a studio or offline person, it's come down to the gym for a coffee, come down to the boot camp for a taster session, come and meet me, uh, come and meet us down the park. It's really easy. Whereas online, it's just like, this is a scam. He's going to steal <laughs> my money. I have no idea who he is. And that is also a, an issue online people tend generally have as well. Yeah, for sure. It's really interesting you mentioned about the systems for online coaches, because I definitely see that as an underutilized or uh, undereducated um, you know, part missing for online coaches. I see a lot of people that, you know, they're consistent in content, they're putting things out there, but the actual higher level marketing and, you know, leaning into paid advertising and developing their funnels, and improving their ecosystem that can be missing uh, a lot, you know, and it's an important aspect of having an online business. I think it almost goes back to the start when we talked about when I qualified as a fit pro, I thought everybody was going to come to me. Yeah. <laughs> and I think maybe that's what people think in the online scene. They post a few uh, TikTok videos or Instagram yeah. pictures, or they do a few Facebook posts and they think people are going to come to them. And the big thing you need to consider is if someone likes your post that is an indication that that person found it interesting or they're interested or they want to keep tabs. That is also an indication to go and message that person. It's not a case of, oh, they like my post, they're going to sign up because it might take six or seven years for that person to sign up. Yeah. And like now what we do, what we offer here at FitPro and Lead Deck, we're an online fitness business. And we have people saying, Dave, I've been following you for four and a half years. And it was only that post yesterday that converted me to want to come and join you. And this is the thing with online. But if they've liked a few posts, now my team, drop them a message, say, hey, thanks for liking my post. Is there anything that you could relate to in it? Or, hey, I know you've been liking a few of our posts. How, how's your leads been going lately? Anything that starts that conversation. So if you're an online in any sort of online business, any comments, like, share, comment on your blog, reply to your email, please, 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 please just reply to them. The best example of all of this, and we say in all the kind of webinars and seminars that we do, um, you walk, let's call it ice cream parlor. You walk into the ice cream parlor, you go to the desk, you're stood there now. What happens? One, the counter person just completely ignores you and they go and play on their phone they go to the toilet they go and do some stuff on the computer and then they come back to you in half an hour or two they drop everything and go and serve you straight away love that it's obvious what they're going to obvious. do so see the same online you're sat there writing the post so what messages you bang hit them up straight away because if you don't someone like me or sam 100 percent will we will get them straight away. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's super interesting because obviously online, it's so difficult to create that connection, to develop that relationship. And like you say, on person, it's a very different process. Um, and that buying cycle for online can be so long. Like you say, four and a half years. Well, if you've got the cash resources to sit and wait <laughs> for four and a half years, then you probably don't even need the business in the first place. Um, but most people I know, you know, the starting a coaching business don't have four and a half years to wait for that first. Uh... What you just need to think outside the box, though, Lo. So all the time, my favorite tool right now, and it's been for the last six six months, probably is Loom. Yeah. Don't know what Loom is? Just go and type in Loom.us and download it onto your computer. It's the best thing ever. Anybody that messages me anything, I don't care what the question is, quick Loom video, send it to them. One, you get notification when they watch it. Two, how super like straight to the point and personal is this message? It's not, and they will see, oh my God, this guy's taking the time to send me a quick video. Obviously, anybody watching this, don't like hammer me with loads of messages now, yeah. But outside the box real small things like this if somebody um sends you fills in your form on your website and they reply they send you the name email and phone and they say hey i'd love to know more about your 12-week program don't email them back phone them up 
Like have that chat with them. If you've got someone's postal address, send them a card and the post on their birthday. There's, there's so much you can do to take, like you said, that buying cycle down from four and a half years to days, not even. Days. Yeah. yeah. Where on the flip side, if you're online, if you're offline, somebody submits the form, you phone them up. Do you want to come down tonight for a taser session? Yeah. And they're closed within like four yeah. hours. <laughs> Love it. No, I haven't had as much exposure to the business side of starting a studio, starting a gym. I was a personal trainer, a coach myself for many, many years, but never seen, you know, the behind the scenes of a gym. Mm. If you were to completely start again with a new studio, what steps would you take or what actions would you take if you know so we spoke, spoke about it as a coach but a studio is completely different uh the model that is definitely going to be the big thing because you need to get that model and model and pricing right so you know what equipment you need to buy that's not saying go and buy forty thousand pounds worth of kit straight away we've we started off with a minimal kit and we've been building as the years go by. But if I could change things now, it, it would definitely be the pricing model straight away. Knowing, know your numbers. You probably, they, you probably read books and articles and everyone says, know your numbers. And just like, yeah, yeah, boring, boring, boring. But if you don't know your numbers, you, you have no chance. Because when you start thinking um, you've got rent, you've got uh, business rates, you've got internet, you've got internet and landline, you've got water, you've got electric, you might have gas, you've got bin collection then, like who knew you had to pay for your bin to be collected? Uh, you've got my zone, which you probably want to get if you're tracking your heart rate stuff. You're probably putting some fancy lights in, so that's your electric bill going up. You want a half decent speaker, which you're going to have to get. You're going to get a music license. You then probably want a, something that plays half decent music not naming any names um what else do you insurance yep. gym insurance content insurance staff insurance then you've got your staff wages then you've got your uh staff tax i i, I holly sorts as well for this out i just have okay. to pay it so you pay the staff on the 8th and then you pay the hmrc tax thing on the 10th um vat every quarter the gym tax uh, when's that that's every year I think it is the accountant's bill for sending you the VAT report the accountant's bill for doing the end of year tax if you don't know that's your awesome. numbers honestly if you don't know your numbers you're you, you it's going to be a slow progress yeah yeah wow it's so much that goes into it and then you know we've just gone through some very difficult years with um the old vid how did you survive that? How did you get through that process of those couple of years? Oh, that's a, a tough one. Granted, we have FitPro and Lead Deck that mm -hmm. if we ever need to borrow money, we can plow that into yeah. the gym if it needs to be. But a lot of that then came down to just clients, client generosity and client support of what you're doing. But at the same time, don't take that for granted either everybody that carried on paying at the end we bought them a box of chocolates and a, and a bunch of flowers and a card to say thank you and kind of like an emotional message it it it, it was hard yeah it really was hard for any small business offline business it was extremely tough i know several gym owners who are closed i know several local small businesses who closed not that they didn't have the best clients. Maybe their pricing model just just didn't work or mm -hmm. maybe they just couldn't service their clients at all. So they had no money coming in. And obviously the grant probably didn't cover it. The bounce back loans might not have covered it. And yeah, tough. it's not something, it's not something you can plan for. No, it's not something you 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 could have the best clients in the world, and like you say, it happens again, and you all leave on month one. Yeah, yeah. Got so no cash reserve. You might have three months cash reserve, and it lasts for six months. <laughs> yeah, really tough times. When you look back at 
that time, is there any now lessons or takeaways from that that you've been able to take and, and action? Um, the first major thing we should have done is furlough the staff on the first time, on the first one. Um, being the type of person I am, I just like, I don't want to borrow money off the government. Not borrowing money off the government. I don't, I don't like relying on people. Yeah. I want, if I'm not in control of it, I don't like the fact, like, I left home quite early. I, I've never, I, yeah, I've had to borrow money every now and again, but I've never relied on people to give me cash. I've made sure I can always do everything myself. But, and that was one, I was like, no, I will pay the wages. And that was one of the biggest things. We furloughed the staff straight away. Yeah, we topped them up to make sure they got their full wage, but we should have done that the first time. That was a killer. Um and then, like you say, just making sure you have a good workout online community structure to keep your clients involved. Yeah, I suppose because of your experience leading up to that, you were probably better, uh, better able to transition um, and adapt quicker than, you know, some of the other other gyms that, you know, unfortunately may not have had that skill or those resources and, you know, struggled because of it. Yeah, the, the, I think the big thing for us is we kind of offer loads. So, uh, yeah, you've got sessions, but we also have an online nutrition course. We've got online recipes. We ha So we had online stuff for our gym clients. When it came to the workouts with the Facebook group, it was like, we'll do the workouts in the Facebook group at this time. All your nutrition stuff's going in. All this is going in. Um, we really, 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 really appreciate your support don't leave <laughs> <laughs> yeah just a, a strong like not call to action at the end <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. like anti call to action that's great so at this time was this when potentially your focus started to shift more towards lead deck and then you know helping with the marketing and sales or was it business as usual as such yeah for the for the for the fit pro and lead deck stuff that's been going for like you'd almost say like two months after becoming a fit pro or yeah. like the first two months of moving down to Southampton. Um, so that, that blew the gym up, gym out the water within the first six months of launching. Um, yeah. Yeah. That, that, yeah, that's, that's just a monster in itself. Yeah. That's really cool. And I think it gives you such good positioning, like you say, because you have your own studio that instantly gives you then that authority to be able to then go and serve and help more people also? Um, yes and no. It's good because I can test and then show people I have my own studio and test. Yeah. Yet I know other marketers who have, in the nicest way, failed running a fitness business who are now also maybe showing what they would if they had more cash in the bank and they could have pushed through uh, the time and grew the fitness business to the place they wanted to grow it to they're helping fitness business grow their business as well so yeah maybe they failed to grow their fitness business in the way they want but they had the right plan they had the right structure they just weren't able to do it but now they're showing them so it, it comes from both sides yep. Having a gym definitely entices people in because they can see what I can do. But at the flip side, you don't just take football. For example, how many Rafa Benitez was your school teacher before he became a football manager? Yeah. You don't always need to work in or have experience in that specific industry to kind of dive in at a, a different part of it. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. That's fair. What would you say when you look back at some of the clients or some of the people that you've worked with over the years, what's been like the most incredible transformation that you've seen or that you've helped someone through either, even in their fitness journey or um, in the business aspect? In the nicest way, the people that actually want to do it will take the most action. So whether that be a client at the gym who is 100% focused. We've helped people lose five, six, seven stone. Amazing. And the only reason they've lost five, six, seven stone is because they've been dedicated to the cause. Like there's like, oh, I really want to thank you, Dave. You've changed my life and all this great stuff. And technically I have, 
but I wasn't the one that had to turn up for every session and kill myself for the first three or four months until I got into a half decent fitness condition. I wasn't the one that cooked their meals and forced them to eat not the greatest of food for the first couple of months to get them to the point they want to get to. Same for Facebook ads and all this other stuff. Yeah, we generate them the leads, but that should be one of the easiest parts of it. Chasing down, making the sales and then keeping clients they are usually the hardest parts. Yeah. So yeah, we've got people who have gone from a one-to-one outdoor to having their own studio or people to having multiple studios. Or we've got some who have like commercial gyms, you know, like pure gyms, you've got thousands of clients. We've helped people kind of get to those points. But again, I'm, I'm not one for shouting about this type of stuff. You're probably, you've probably been following yeah. me long enough. I don't really talk about our wins enough. Something I get shouted at a lot by my own mentors because <laughs> I need to talk about my wins. But yeah I'm, I'm not really that type of person that shouts about it i like that approach though in that you know yes you can provide someone the direction but they've still got to walk the walk themselves um, yeah I, I like that i like that a lot so where you're at right now what are some of the challenges that you're looking to overcome at the moment with your with your business obviously you, you know you have this uh pretty crazy mission um what's some of the things right now that's like oh okay i want to improve this or this is what we're working on my big thing and it's always been it's always been the same since doing facebook ads is believing in myself mm-hmm. believing in myself and then shouting about what it is i actually do i could say it could be 20 30 percent of the people i'm friends with on facebook who are a little bit unsure what i actually do yeah they've been friends with me for two or three years now um so that's that's a personal thing that I have to work through, and to be able to reach the target of a hundred thousand fit pros, I have to battle in my mind that I am good enough yeah. at this, and then actually share a lot more about. Yeah, maybe I've come across a very strange in this episode. I'm like shouting, excited, bouncing around and stuff. Yeah, if you kind of know me, I'm quite quiet and reserved. And, and yeah, I, I need to battle through that section in my life to be able to really progress to those next yeah. levels. Yeah, really just So I uh, just had a conversation with a, um, a psychologist, a clinical psychologist by the name of Corey Wilkes, and he talks about four different fears that people typically have. And those are fear of failure, fear of uncertainty, fear of success and fear of judgment. So obviously for you, you've already done so much and helped so many people. It's really you know, interesting to hear that, okay, there's still so many more levels for you to go, which is exciting. But when you look at those four, is there one of those that goes, ah, that's probably something that I want to I wanna work on? The last one was the judgment, I judgment. think. Yeah, and that, that probably goes back to like being a kid and stuff, yeah. and skinny and all that type of stuff um yeah judgment to them feel of fear of failure might be the big thing i hate when people leave our ads management service after one month yeah. <laughs> it it's it really painful because i know what we've done we've we've done our very best it's you you are that problem you didn't chase these leads enough or you weren't good enough at selling to these people yeah. um and that then holds me back because i'm like oh no i don't really want to work with you yeah because i've done a few little scans on their facebook and oh, they, they don't seem to want this enough i'm not working with them yeah um so yeah <laughs> well welcome to my mind yeah no it's we all have these fears i would encourage everyone who's like listening right now to sit and look at okay which of these fears is holding holding me back um it's really interesting to mention that for your failure for anyone that doesn't know if you're running any paid ads you know david you're going to know considerable more than me but one month is not a uh, a good turnaround time for facebook ads you need uh a much longer you know average three months plus minimum to uh to actually see any sort of return on any paid ads that you're running i'm going to disagree with that 100 percent. yeah hey yeah. longer no shorter less- yeah 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 like i said we can turn the ad on today you have to be proactive like i i did a i did a 
a webinar sales pitch earlier just promote lead deck you yeah. do a few slides on a specific topic and then you relate that to lead deck and you kind of sell just the typical stuff and i was basically talking about you have to automate your lead chasing you have to if a lead comes in now and you're busy coaching your clients but a lead and they then scroll through facebook and see your competition and they apply and that person phones them first you lose mm. it's like you snooze you lose I like so a lead comes in now, I phone them up and say, hey, uh, it's 20 to five now. I say, I've got a session at seven o'clock. Do you want to pop down, have a little chat, go over the session, see what it's all about? Yeah, bang. That person maybe cost three, four pound in ad spend. And they've just joined the one eight nine six week program down at the gym. So Facebook ads can work instantly if, if, if you do work yeah <laughs> the resilience is there i like that you know so there's definitely some learnings in there for me because i've always looked at paid marketing as complete long-term approach of like okay we're going to set these up going to get these moving you know and we're going to start to build that audience over over a long period of time but um i really like that focus on ultimately on speed and proactivity um, i can definitely see how valuable you know that can be too yeah it, it, lots it, to learn what we were talking about uh, um when was it i was listening to was it talk sport i was listening to um and they were talking about i think it's lewis hamilton's new um team that he races for anyway whoever it was it was basically saying that they've hired a load of new people mechanics people that stand in i i don't know much about f1 so who stand in the pit so when he came in they were too slow at changing his tires or they hadn't proactively fought let's get the drill or the tire or whatever it was ready and by not being proactive and having this stuff ready to actions just to go for it straight away obviously he came third or fourth yeah. or wherever he came again i didn't hear the full story but that's it if you're not prepared if you're not ready to take action if you're not fast you are going to be beaten by me or sam or somebody else who's even more hungrier than us to actually really go for it yeah i think that's important is a massive takeaway there for any business really especially in this day and age with how quick you know you can communicate socials and um just overall like even a pt on the gym floor it shows the importance of that speed yeah. you know and that can be your biggest asset to sales too go back to the ice cream shop just yeah. go back to that ice cream shop it's 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 just so 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 simple too <laughs> so it's so simple somebody messaged you on facebook like yeah you know i'll get back to them 20 minutes i just need to finish this episode he's like you, you've, you've lost them because in the fitness industry, it's so unique and it, it, pro it probably works similar in some of the other health and fitness industries where something means a lot to mm -hmm. you. If you wake up one day and you feel terrible because your clothes don't fit, you're going to feel bad. And the first thing you like is I need to do something about this. They see your advert and they apply straight away to your advert. They then go to work and someone throws them a compliment. Their boss says, you know what? You're doing a really good job recently. You go out for dinner and you have a fantastic meal. And then you phone up and you say, hey, I noticed you applied this morning. Oh, yeah, I was just inquiring. I, I'm not interested anymore. And you've lost them because they've gone from feeling terrible to feeling fantastic in that space of a day. And you've lost them. And there's, there's so much study that goes, if you phone somebody within the first five minutes while it's still front of mind, while they're still thinking about whatever that emotional feeling is, you're much more likely to make a sale. And don't think it's a bad thing that you're playing on emotions or you're selling on emotions. If they've thought of it once, they're going to think of it again. Yeah. But that next time you think of it, your competition might phone them up faster and you lose again. There's a massive takeaway for me here massive takeaway in that in the importance of the speed um i just hadn't thought about it too much you know i i coach a lot of people to obviously with the outreach and um and developing their marketing but not looking so much at speed of the communication um so it's definitely you know a lot to learn there's some really big takeaways there for anyone who's who's owning a business right now and i'm sure it's got a lot of people thinking about some of their current systems and things that they they have in place so 
So just so, just quickly, just just going you know, back to the presentation I did earlier, don't think you have to drop everything. You're making your kids dinner and someone messages you and you've got to just stop everything. What we talk about when we say automation and what we said earlier, we just have three key parts to the automated. So someone's sent you a Facebook message. Literally just say to them, hey, thanks for showing interest in our program. That's acknowledgement. That's letting them know that you've got you've you've received the message i usually get back to people within five six hours because i'm busy dealing with the kids so i'm coaching sessions and stuff so i'll get back to you as quick as possible and then finish with a call to action but until i do what what is it you're looking for help with where where are you with your transformation what is it you need doing to your house so the three things acknowledgement let them know that you've got the message Two, give them a, an estimate of how long it's going to be until you get back to them and three, let that conversation keep going by getting them to reply again. So when you do get back to them, they they you're stuck in their head because they've actually replied. So you don't have to make the sales straight away. Have something straight away that that keeps that that bond open there. Love that. Love that. It's awesome. So David, where can people go to come and learn more about you? You know uh, what you do, and also you know how they can potentially look to work alongside you. Okay. Uh, so what I've said everything there about speed, that isn't always the case for me. <laughs> I get like 50, 60 messages a day, unfortunately. So I have to spend dedicated days replying to people. But message me on Facebook or the best way to get hold of me is just phone me. Yeah. Nice. Oh. Nice. Yeah, don't phone me. <laughs> so I do have a question that I ask all of my guests that, that come on to the show. Um, as it's not an easy question to answer, but the question itself is, what advice would your future self give you in this current moment? Uh, enjoy life. Like just, we're gonna be dead soon. And when we're dead, we're dead forever. You have to, you have to enjoy, you have to enjoy life. If you don't enjoy the business you're in, go and start another business. If you're not enjoying the job that you're in, go and leave your job and it might be the harshest thing ever but if you don't enjoy the person that you're living with you have you only live once we don't know what happens when you die you might get to reflect on your life and have to write a report on it or something but you don't want to have to write that report say you know what i i one of the biggest mistakes i made was this if that thing is making you wake up every morning and you think oh i don't want to do it there's only one person that can change it. And that's the same with any part of business. If you've signed the client up and six months later, you dread that person, there's only one person to blame. If you're not making enough money, there's only one person you can blame. You have to take charge of your life. And that's what we went back to earlier. Things that I'm not in control of, I dread because I can't dictate how that's going to work. Yeah. Incredible advice. Love it. Love it. David, massive thank you for coming on the show. This has been awesome. I've definitely got a lot of takeaways just myself. So I really do appreciate your time. Um, all the links to your socials and also where the guys can find you a little bit more will be uh, underneath this video. Um, any any final words? It is absolutely sweating in this conservatory. Yeah. <laughs> It is warm in the UK. Somebody said to me yesterday, oh, are you in a greenhouse? I was like, no, it's a conservatory. And it has two modes. It's either absolutely boiling hot or it's absolutely freezing cold. It's just, just like my gym. It's a, just an old warehouse unit where in the winter it's absolutely Baltic. You're coaching with hat, scarf and gloves on in the winter. In the summer, you have, I mean, we have to be in shorts and T-shirt, but we're literally drenched because it's so hot in the unit. Yeah. Love it. I remember those days grabbing a barber and it's like almost frozen. <laughs> Just like, oh no, here we go again. David, massive thank you, my friend. This has been a lot of fun and uh, hopefully we get to do this again sometime. No worries, Sam. Appreciate it, mate. I'll speak to you soon. Yeah.